Well, greetings, church. We're back again. I trust that you're ready to be discipled by the living word of God. All right, let's get into it, shall we, today again? And we're looking at, uh, at the book of Isaiah, chapter 40, verses 30 through to 31. The book of Isaiah, chapter 40, verses 30 to 31. And let's just open up with a word of prayer, shall we? Almighty Father, we are grateful of your power and might in our lives. And Lord, we do pray that you might, Father, use us in an extraordinary way, that we might not look to our weakness, but look to your strength, Father. And so as we break bread, we pray for your guidance and your wisdom. In Jesus' name, amen. Great. Isaiah 40, verse 30 to 31. Even though the youths shall faint and be weary, and the young men shall utterly fall, but those who wait in the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings like eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. Lord bless the reading of his word. And so church, the key word to this verse is renew. And, and that'll better be translated exchange. As we wait upon the Lord, he will take away our strength and replace it with his own. It's not a matter of combining our strength with his, but it's a matter of complete and utter removal of our strength and to put it on his. God is saying here, if you are strong in yourself, I cannot use you. If you can do it yourself, you do not need me. Isn't that just a profound truth, church? What does the Lord ask us to do before he will exchange, if you will, strength with us? Well, firstly, we've got to acknowledge our need. King David wrote in Psalm 34, 6, The poor man cried, and the Lord heard him and saved him out of all his troubles. As for acknowledged his weaknesses and need of God in these stirring words in Psalm 73 and verse 22. So foolish was I and ignorant. I was like a beast before you. Both David and Esther received God's strength because they were willing to humbly acknowledge their need and indeed their weakness. There is a powerful word of promise for all who do the same thing, isn't there? The Apostle Paul is a wonderful example. Paul found that, that if he would acknowledge areas of need and weakness in his life, it would result in the strength of God coming to him in a much more powerful measure. He writes in 2 Corinthians 12, 7 and 8, Lest I should be exalted above measure through the abundance of the revelations, there was given unto me a thorn in the flesh, the messenger of Satan to buffet me. For this thing I, I besought the Lord thrice, that it might depart from me. And how did the Lord, how did the Lord answer Paul's petition for relief from this buffeting and weakness? The Lord in verse 9 of 2 Corinthians 12 said this, My grace is sufficient for thee, for my strength is made perfect, complete if you will, in your weakness. This church is the principle by which the power of the gospel works. When we are weak and sense our great need of God, this makes us completely dependent on God. And this causes us to spend much time in prayer and the result is, we are strong. 
May God bless you and keep you as you walk with him this day. Shall we pray? Father God, we thank you, Lord, that your grace is sufficient for us. We pray, Lord, that we would be made complete in your strength and our weakness. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, amen and amen.